Good morning, everybody. This is Thomas Felder, and we're going live this morning on our Daniel and Revelation Bible study. <clears throat> we're covering Daniel chapter four. Over the last few days, we've covered Daniel chapter one, Daniel chapter two, and Daniel chapter three. In Daniel chapter four, we are now covering the conversion covering the conversion of King Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter four, we find that Nebuchadnezzar, good morning to everybody who's on the phone lines, good morning to everybody who's online. And thank you so much, Miss Izzy. I just wanna let you know that this morning, we are covering Daniel chapter four, and this is the only chapter in the entire Old Testament that a pagan king or even a pagan person wrote a chapter of the Bible. In Daniel chapter four, it tells about the greatness of Elohim's kingdom. It tells about King Nebuchadnezzar's own humiliation and his own conversion. And no other chapter in the entire Bible tells so plainly how a nation's strength and prosperity are determined by its faithfulness in fulfilling God's purpose. Let's pray. Then we'll go through Daniel chapter four. We'll add a little bit of commentary. I'm inviting you to get a pen, paper, um, get a Bible. It's important that you learn to read the Bible for yourself because sooner or later, after a while, you will be held responsible. You won't be able to say big mama said, the preacher said, the reverend, the bishop, whoever. You are going to be responsible. So read it for yourself. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us a few moments this morning to go through your word. Be with us as we read it. Let your spirit rest and abide on us that we would have understanding and bless us, Father, in your holy son's name, Yahshua, amen and amen. So here we are in Daniel chapter four, verse one, and it reads, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God have wrought towards me. Verse three, Daniel four, verse three. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. In, in, in Daniel chapter four, this chapter is Nebuchadnezzar's personal testimony of Elohim's love and patient persistence with a heathen king. Like I told you before, this is the only part of the Old Testament written by a pagan written by a non-Hebrew, this is amazing. It stands out in the Chronicles of even heaven. Let's pick up at verse four, Daniel 4.4. 4. It says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. Verse five, I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore, made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. So who did he call? He called Dion Warwick. He called psychic friends. 
He called the people who tell him his horoscope, the people who say they can look into the crystal ball. He called the people who said they could read his palm. He called the people who said they speak to the ancestors and do voodoo. He called all of them. It's amazing how the father keeps speaking to Babylonians and this Babylonian kingdom through dreams. You got to remember that Nebuchadnezzar was named after Nabu. Nabu was the king, was uh, the, the god of prophecy, the god of dreams to the Babylonians. The most high of heaven used the very instrument that Babylon said they was good at to lead them to him. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Let's pick up at verse, verse eight. Let's pick up at verse eight. In verse eight, it says, but at last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him, I told the dream saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians. This is Daniel now. Remember they changed his name. Daniel means God is judge. And they changed his name to Belteshazzar, which means uh, Bel protects, right? They named him after one of their gods. Verse nine, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head and my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the ends of all the earth. The king is dreaming about a tree that reaches from earth to heaven. The height was great, and it was seen by everybody on the planet. Now, what could he have possibly been dreaming about? Let's go to verse 12. The leaves thereof were fair and the fruit thereof much and in it was meat for all. The beast of the field had shadow under it and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof and all flesh was fed of it. Meaning everything on the planet was able to eat off this tree. I am so grateful that the Bible does not leave me and you to guess the interpretation of the dream. The Bible interprets itself. Verse 13, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed and behold a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. Verse 14, he cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree, cut down the tree, cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, let the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron, and brass and the tender roots of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Now, so far, he's gotten a handful of information. And what happened was Nebuchadnezzar, after he had gotten the previous dream, remember the one in Daniel 2? when he found out that his, his kingdom was gonna be the greatest kingdom ever from the time of Daniel until the time of the return of, of Yahshua, 
He began to build up his kingdom. He began to expand his territory. And after the first vision, he brought in a country called Tyre. He subdued Egypt. And Babylon was called the Golden Kingdom. And God had reminded Nebuchadnezzar by rescuing the three Hebrew boys from the fire that he is in control, that Elohim is in control and not the king of Babylon. So here in his dream, he sees this great tree which represented himself and his kingdom and it gets chopped down. When we look at verse 15, when the tree is chopped down, it is left with a band of iron and a band of brass around the bottom of the tree. Now, if you notice, God doesn't pull up the tree by the roots. He could have pulled it up by the roots in the vision, but he doesn't. He cuts it and he leaves a stump of the tree with a band of iron and a band of brass. Now, if you remember the vision that the king had in Daniel chapter two, what did the brass represent? The brass represented the kingdom of Greece. What did the iron represent? It represented the kingdom of Rome. So this king in his vision, God is telling him that once his kingdom is destroyed, remnants of his kingdom, meaning the character of his kingdom, the gods that he worship in this kingdom, the way he worship would be manifested in two later empires, the kingdom of Greece, the kingdom of Rome. Matter of fact, Rome is often called in the Bible, Babylon, because it worshiped its gods and held many of the same beliefs. One of the main beliefs that Babylon had was the worship of the sun and the moon and the stars. These are the same things that Rome worshiped, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Let's continue. Verse 16, Daniel chapter four, verse 16. Let his heart be changed from a man's and let a beast heart be given unto him and let seven times pass over him. What's seven times? That's seven years, seven years, right? This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and he setteth up over it the basest of men. That means the most foul men he puts over kingdoms. When we choose not to have Elohim be our king and to be our ruler, he says, you don't want me? I'll, see, I'll, I'll give you what you want. You don't want a righteous ruler over your kingdom? I'll give you a trump. I'll give you a man who tells you that he can grab a woman's private parts and shoot a man on Madison Avenue on television and still be your president. He says, you don't want me? You don't want righteous rulership? I will give you the basis of men so you will call out to me. Don't complain about Trump, man. You got exactly what you deserved. Verse 18, this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen, now thou, O Belshazzar, Declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy God is in thee. Right? So the king is admitting that his own people cannot interpret the dream. I don't even know why he keeps going back to them, man. But he went back again, and now he's ready to get the interpretation from Daniel. When we looked at uh, Daniel 4.16, seven times represents the seven years of Nebuchadnezzar's ordeal. Why did God choose seven? Seven is his number, right? I keep telling you, seven means completion. 
right? In the creation process, you had six days of creation. Man was created on the sixth day. God was created on the seventh. And he has used the seventh, the seventh day and the, the number seven throughout all history to remind his children of who, who is their God and to whom they belong. Seven, 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 seven. You find it all through this Bible study that we're going to do. In Daniel chapter four, verses 17 and 18, it is not by the might of armies, by the wisdom of rulers, or by the progress of civilizations that the rise, prosperity, and fall of kingdoms is determined. It is by the sovereignty of Elohim. We find that in Proverbs 21, verse 1, and in Psalms 24, verses 1 and 2. Whether the rulers in our world today are noble or corrupt, it doesn't matter. God is still in charge, making all things work together to fulfill his purposes. Romans 8, 28. So there's nothing that Congress can do, nothing that the Senate can do, nothing that Trump can do, nothing that Putin can do that God is not still in control. That's good to know, man. Now I can sleep at night. Let's pick up at verse 19. Verse 19. Because Daniel's about to explain to the king the interpretation of his dream. Daniel 4, 19. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour. And his thoughts troubled him. It means he was in shock. The king spake and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. Daniel knew what the dream meant. But you got to understand something. You are not quick to give a king bad news. You give a king bad news in today's economy, you'll get fired. You give a king bad news in that economy, off with your head, man. Verse 20. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth. Verse 21. Whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, meaning that everybody was able to be supplied by the plenty of Babylon under which the beast of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of heaven had their habitation. Daniel now explains to him who, who Daniel, who Nebuchadnezzar is seeing in the vision. Verse 22, he says, it is thou, O king, thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thou dominion to the end of the earth. The tree that the king saw was himself, right? You see how this is working out in prophecy? He saw a tree in his vision and the tree represented himself. Verse 23, and whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, hew down the tree and destroy it yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast of the field till seven times pass over him. Verse 24, Daniel says, this is the interpretation, O king. This is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord, the King. Daniel says, gave you a bunch of information. I'm now going to explain it to you because God has told me what it meant. Verse 5, I mean, verse um, 25. And it says, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times, which is seven years, 
You got to remember that times means years in this translation of the Bible. In this Aramaic, times, times means years. Because later on, there'll be a prophecy that says times, times, and half a times. So that would be a year plus two years plus a half a year. So where you see seven times, that means seven years. Okay, seven times equals what, everybody? Seven years. And seven years shall pass over thee till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. It means God can cause anybody to rule over men. Verse 26. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shall have known that the heavens do rule. So he's telling the king that for seven years, God is going to take away your kingdom. And after the seven years, I'm going to return it to you. Verse 27. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Daniel is telling the king that if you change your ways, king, the punishment that I had just told you will come, God may have mercy on you. Each of us is given a period of probation. God tells us to change, do differently, change your diet, man. You know, change your diet. You know, you keep eating Twinkies for breakfast and eating pork rinds for lunch. You are stirring up a cancer inside your body. You know this, man. And yeah, you live 40 years without it or 50 years without it, but it's just a matter of time. Don't take for granted his grace and his mercy. And he's telling the king of Babylon that you got to change. He is giving him an opportunity to change. In his mercy, God warned the king to humbly accept the fact that all he had accomplished was by the blessing of Elohim. Let's go on to verse 28. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. He already got a warning, y'all. Verse 30, the king spake and said, is not this the great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Wow. Daniel had just given him a warning. He had gotten an opportunity to change his ways. And for 12 months, he didn't edify himself. And after 12 months, after a year passed from the time he spoke to Daniel, he forgot the warning. And the Bible says in verse 31, while the word was in the king's mouth, while he was saying that, is this not my great Babylon? While he was saying, is this not the, the kingdom that I have built by my might and power? While he was saying it was for the honor of his majesty, the Bible says, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. Verse 32, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times, what's seven times, everybody? Seven years, seven years. Why seven years? Because that's God's number, seven. And he wanted to prove to Babylon who worshiped six, which is man. He says six is not in control, seven is. People will do anything to change seven to something else. They'll change it to six, they'll change it to one because they don't want to honor and acknowledge who the creator is. And seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Verse 33, 
the same hour. It means immediately, immediately, the same time this, that this voice is speaking, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as an oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven. His body was wet because he stayed outside. The dew comes up and wets the grass. He was living outside like an animal. And he did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like, the, like bird's claws. So his hair just grew crazy. Nobody cutting and trimming his hair no more because he's now a madman. And his nails, nobody's trimming those anymore. This great king that was used to being groomed and living in luxury is now living like an animal. Understand something with this king, that Babylon had become the capital of the world at this point in 605 BC. And Babylon as a, as a city was approximately 13 miles long and 10 miles wide just about half the size of the District of Columbia. And surrounding the city, he built a double wall, approximately 50 feet thick. It had 250 towers and eight gates. The walls of the city were so thick that a chariot with six horses could ride around the city walls. One of the most famous things about the city of Babylon was the Ishtar Gate which opened upon a sacred processional leading to the temple of the pagan god Marduk. This gate in the city walls was decorated in yellow, green, and red glazed bricks, which featured drawings of lions and dragons and bulls on a blue background. The center of the city was a famous temple. It was 300 feet square, and its base and over 300 feet high. Another of Nebuchadnezzar's achievements was the Hanging Gardens. It was one of the seventh wonders of the ancient world. Nebuchadnezzar's wife lived in the mountains and she loved to see the waters trickle down from the mountains to the valleys. So what Nebuchadnezzar did is he created in the middle of a desert, a place that ran with water and beautiful flowers for his wife. And then he created something called his throne room. It was one of the greatest throne rooms ever created by mankind. It was 173 feet long, 57 feet wide, and 66 feet high. This immense hall is probably most likely the same place that we'll run into again in Daniel chapter five tomorrow, where his grandson throws a big party. What's so important about this great king who did all of these wonderful things to be brought so low is that his reasoning departed from him. You and I often think that we have established ourselves in life because of our intellect or our great ability or our connections. But understand in one second, you can wake up today or tomorrow and not be able to carry on an intelligent conversation. That's what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. God can reduce the proud monarchs of the world or the proud businessmen of the world. And even you, my friend, to the actions of that of a beast. Never say what you will not do. I always see people, they watch the news and they see people do crazy things and they say what they wouldn't do. Understand, if it were not for the grace and mercy of the most high, there is no telling what you and I would do. For, full, for a full seven years, he would be humiliated before the nations dwelling with the cattle and eating grass as his daily food. However, Elohim saw in the king a changeable heart. Nebuchadnezzar's punishment was severe, but sometimes Elohim, the most high, uses tough love 
to get a person's attention in order to lead them to salvation. He uses tough love with us too. Sometimes when we lose mama or lose a job or get cancer, the house goes into foreclosure or bankruptcy, our money gets funny, you know. He uses things to get our attention. And the bigger you are, the harder you fall. <laughs> the bigger you are, the harder you're gonna fall for him to get your attention. Verse 34, what happened with the king? Verse 34, Daniel 4, 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom from generation to generation. Boy, I tell you, this, this king sounds baptized. <laughs> he sounds made over. He sounds brand new. Verse 35, and all the inhabitants of the earth are refuted, reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will. He's talking about Elohim, the most high, does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? We can never look at the creator of the, of the heavens and earth and the sea and say to him, what are you doing? You know, Job, Job was complaining about his problem. Job is a man in the Bible who was complaining about all of the bad things that were happening to him. And in response, God just started to ask Job things like, where were you when I created the foundations of the earth? He asked Job how much water is in the sea. You know, he asked him questions that no man can answer. Who are we to complain and question God? We are nothing. We are, our lives are like a mere vapor, man. In the scope of eternity, your life is like a puff of smoke. What doest thou? Who has a, the, the gall to ask that of the creator? Verse 36. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Verse 37, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, do what, Nebuchadnezzar? I praise and extol and honor the king of heaven and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. When we look back at Daniel chapter four, verses 34 to 37, the Holy Spirit of the Most High worked on Nebuchadnezzar's stubborn heart for many years before he surrendered his life to the God of heaven. The patience of Elohim showed toward Nebuchadnezzar. And it gives us hope. It gives me hope. It should give you hope as he continues to work with us and those that we love. We're done for today. We're done. We're done. Tomorrow we'll come back with Daniel chapter five. When we get to Daniel chapter five, we run into Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. And as a matter of fact, we, we never hear from Nebuchadnezzar again. This testimony that he gave in Daniel chapter four was his last word, these last words. It's nice to know that if your last words, your last words are recorded, it's you extolling the God of heaven. So I expect when we make it into the kingdom, those of us who are faithful and righteous, when we get there, we will see Nebuchadnezzar. So listen, we're done with the, the video portion of today's call. You are welcome to call in if you want. We'll be on the call in line for about 20 minutes in case you have any comments or questions, et cetera. You're welcome to call in. The call in number is 712-432-0075. The dial in pin code is 745-954 pound. I'll give it to you again. 712-432-0075. The pin code is 745-954 pound. You can also dial in on that number 
seven days a week at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard, Standard Time. We're going to be doing this call until we are done with our 31 days of transformation. And we're going to finish Daniel and Revelation during the next uh, 31 days. So we thank you for joining us today. Um, I look forward to seeing each of you at the gates of the kingdom for what would it profit us to gain the whole world and to lose our own soul. Until I meet you and greet you, walk with the king today and be a blessing. Today's video call, whether you be on some video apparatus uh, or Zoom or YouTube or whatever you are watching us on today is officially over. Elohim bless.